Hello and welcome back to Colouring with Kay. Thank you for clicking on the video and welcome to part two of my background options in colouring books. So in this video um, I'm going to show you a couple of techniques again. Um, using watercolour crayons um, is an option and I use um, my Neocolour 2s quite a lot for this purpose. Um, there are other versions of these uh, watercolours, other brands that you can buy but I find that the Neocolour 2 are exceptional um, in terms of how they dissolve really really well when you add the water. So um, there's that and then what else I wanted to show you is um, pre-preparing your pages. Now I've already um, laid down one layer and usually I use two layers in colouring books but um, I've laid down a layer of gesso on this section here and you can you can hear it's quite rough and then pre-prepared um, this little box here with the golden satin glazing liquid and that's much smoother compared to that hope you can tell from the noise um, so this is the satin glazing liquid from golden and this is the transparent gesso that I use it's the um, make sure I shut it first it's the Pebio one there are obviously other brands as well so let's start with the watercolour crayons um, so the watercolour crayons the neocolour which come in a um, in various sets of um, I think I've got the 15 which I bought first and then I bought the 40 and then I bought the um, set of 84 I think it is so um, I mean these are just lovely lovely crayons they are beautiful so they're really really versatile to use if you don't want to you know get out your your um, watercolour brushes and your watercolour pans your palettes and everything this is very convenient um, and easy to do so I just lay down the colour I mean you can also get your water brush and actually um, to take the colour directly off this. Let me bring you in a little bit closer, sorry. Um, you can al always do that where you can take the colour off the, um, the um, crayon itself. And then I'm going to use this colour. I think these all go very well together. And then all I do is use my water brush and you can see how lovely it dissolves. I've done many a background using Neocolor 2s and they are probably um, one of my most commonly used um, options, background um, options in colouring books. Um, also get a bit of tissue to dab off the excess colour and make sure it's um, the blend between the colours is as I want it or well, the best I can do it anyway best I can get it so yeah there are other brands that you can buy but I find that these are probably one of the best okay so that's um, an option that I use a lot in my colouring books are the Neocolor 2 crayons. Okay, so examples of um, watercolour crayons that I've used as backgrounds in my colouring books, there are many because I've used Neocolor 2 uh, backgrounds in a lot of pages. So I've just thought I'd show you a couple of examples. There's um, this one here. Um, I'll just bring it out a little bit so you can have a look. Move stuff out of the way. I have very little room so yes there's this one here and it's got a Neocolor 2 background um, that I used with crayons and um, I think it's come out quite well and then another example of a Neocolor 2 background is this one in Flora where you've got this lovely field mouse so this is all Neocolor 2 as well um, as far as I can remember so that's two examples of Neocolor 2. Now there are other options as well. Um, there are Distress Crayons that I have a few of. 
Um, I don't. I, I've used these um, maybe two or three times, and um, they're okay, but they don't dissolve as well as I probably want them to. So, sort of um, have a sort of a lipstick opening mechanism. We'll just try out how 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 they work anyway. and see um, how well we do because I have used them I think in Hannah Carl's on book on a background um, that's the only example I can remember actually but um, let's try adding oops, water to it so yeah they they're not too bad I used to use these from my art journaling days. So yep, yeah, that's that. They don't work too badly. There we go. Okay, um, there's also the um, Faber-Castell Gelatos, which I rarely use and um, in fact I don't think I've ever used them just on the page itself because um, they don't really blend out particularly well um, but I would use them on a pre-prepared page so that's my watercolour crayons options and now I wanted to show you this bit which is just gonna spritz my watercolour palette because I'm going to use it in a, in, a, in a few seconds so pre-prepared gesso or using a uh, golden satin glazing liquid I usually use two layers so put a layer on let it dry and then put another layer on and it just makes your paper um, take watercolour really well so it will prevent the paper from buckling too much and it allows you to work with the watercolour on the surface much better so um, I'll show you an example or try to show you an example of what I mean I'm just going, I'm just um, preparing a bit of watercolour. So you can use your watercolour paint and it just moves so much easier on the page. So if you are going to do blending, the paper is not going to absorb it as quickly. Um, and therefore you can, you know, work on it longer so you can see that's a much better blend than I probably would have been able to get um, if it wasn't pre-prepared. So you can use your watercolour, you can even use your acrylics like that if you want. Um, so that's that. The other thing is even your new colour twos, they will work um, significantly better on a pre-prepared page. So. I mean you get the same effect with the satin glaze the biggest difference that I found um, with it is that the satin glaze will allow you to use your pencils should you want to do shading on top um, whereas the gesso is too rough I think way too rough to, to allow that and also because the golden satin glazing liquid is smoother I would use um, you know pens on it as well so it will allow me to use the pens without damaging the nibs because it's smoother so you can see the neo colour on here is significantly more um, you know easier to blend and dissolves much more readily than it would otherwise so yeah, the other thing to show you is when it's pre-prepared is that if I use my gelatos and I lay them down, um, it's easier for me to blend this out as well. Just showing it on both, on the gesso and on the, um, and I'd, I could use my finger as well like that and you can see you get a really really nice um, blend here so it just sort of blends out like that so that is a 
another option so the only time I would um, I'm just gonna clean my finger off and um, the only time I would use the gelatos would be on a pre-prepared background in my coloring books because I get a, a much better blend and of course you can use your water as well if you want to uh, blend it out as well you know to get into the you know finer detailed edges of, of things in colouring books you can use your watercolour brush to then just do that. Um, other option also is I mean it's one of the key things when I when I discovered pre-preparing your pages it just opened up a lot of possibilities so water based markers from um, your um, Crayola super tips to these Tombow markers to Arteza Twy markers you can use these um, showing you on here and blend it out like that can you see how they just blend out so easily um, and you'd get the same effect on your um, you know the satin glaze and because it will work the same like I said the only difference being that you can use um, pens and it won't damage your nibs you can also use alcohol markers and it should not bleed through if you use a pre-prepared page. So also showing another thing that I use is I use, um, I just blend with the pen straight on the, um, on the page. So like that. I just blend straight onto it and allow the colours to merge like that. So that's another, got a little bit of a pigment thing that's come off there. So yeah, that's, allows you to blend, allows you to blend straight onto the page itself. Like that. So you can do that with any, any sort of water-based marker, whereas if you try to do that on the page itself, so this is, a non-prepared page and if you look there it just gets absorbed into the paper the pigment you're not gonna well you do a little bit you do a little bit but it's not going to move as you would here um, and the blend if the colors were of slightly you know further away from each other in the color wheel it would not blend too well so um, that is a really good option which allows you to use a lot of different watercolor medium if you use your um, satin glazing liquid or your uh, transparent gesso. Okay, examples of where I have used um, uh, pre-prepared gesso pages and then used um, Neocolor 2 on top is this one here. This is from Rita Berman's Spring Book and um, this is pre-prepared with gesso and I I used new colour 2 for the background so the sky is new colour 2 and also for the flowers and the grass I think I used and for the water as well I think I used Arteza Twy markers and Tombow brush pens um, the water based markers and just blended it on the actual uh, page itself. Um, another example of where I've used the pre-prepared gesso pages in Worlds Within Worlds so on this page again uh, these cacti, in fact the whole thing has been done with um, water-based markers apart from the actual the actual animals spikes here which were done with watercolour pencil but the cacti and then the background is all done with um, water-based markers as well as some sort of distress crayons um, and also uh, possibly even gelatos that I used on there um, and then used water to help blend it out. More example of where I've used gelatos. I know 100% where I used gelatos was actually on this double page spread in Worlds Within Worlds. So this bottom bit here is definitely done with gelatos um, in the background bit here um, of the ruins. And then I used, um, I think, water to blend it out as well. Okay, so um, I hope you found that a little bit useful and I shall hopefully see you in part um, three of my uh, background options in colouring books next time. Until then, take care and bye.